This video is an introduction to film scoring basics and the technical setup for writing music to picture. We'll cover three main topics. Basic setup, like importing video, time code, etc. Hit points and time, things like markers, tempo, and meter. And finally, some tips on templates and workflow. I'm using Logic Pro, but any mainstream DAW should be able to handle the same things. Also, this video is in partnership with the Q2 and their score relief charity fundraiser and scoring competition, which I'll tell you more about later in the video. Our demo video is the short film Wing It, the animation that's part of this year's score relief competition. We're gonna start real basic, so those of you who are brand new to all this can follow along. First thing we need to do after opening a new session is import the video. I'll go to File, Movie, Open Movie, find the video I want to import, and click Open. In Logic, you'll get this pop-up asking if you want to open the movie, which of course we do, and extract the audio track, which is usually dialogue and sound effects. We wanna check that box because that will bring the audio into our session as its own track. And that will make it much easier to mix our music with the dialogue and sound effects when exporting our final project. Later on, I'll show you how I have my template set up to make that even easier. You might get an alert that says, the movie frame rate doesn't match the project frame rate. Make sure you use whatever the movie frame rate is. So you wanna change your project to conform with the video, not the other way around. As you probably know, frame rate is how many individual frames there are per second. 24 FPS, 24 frames per second. You can also check your project's frame rate by going to File, Project Settings, Synchronization. The way we find specific frames and make sure things are in sync is with timecode. Timecode is an eight digit string of numbers that tells us the hours, minutes, seconds, and frames of any point in our session. It's not there in our example video, but many times you'll see timecode burned into the movie itself which is a helpful way to know if you are lined up correctly. Just be careful, if the timecode burned into your video has a semicolon at the end instead of a colon, it means it's in drop frame. I don't wanna confuse an intro lesson like this with a long-winded explanation, so just keep an eye out for the semicolon and look it up if you ever run into it. The last thing we wanna do for the basic setup is make sure the video is in the right place. Go to File, Project Settings, Movie, and you can double check that the timecode Logic thinks is when the movie starts is actually correct. With a short film like this, you're most likely starting at one hour, zero minutes, zero seconds, zero frames. But don't take that for granted. It's always good to double check. Since this video has no timecode burn in, we can just assume that one hour start time. But if your video does have timecode, then just check that very first frame. I have worked on some projects that have some pre-roll and the timecode starts earlier than one hour. Okay, we've got our video set up. Now let's talk about how to make your music hit things at the right time. First, I wanna let you know about Score Relief from the Q2. Score Relief is a free to enter composing competition with a focus on a fundraiser for arts related charities. This year's competition is to score the short animated film Wing It, which you're seeing in this video. There are prizes for the top five entries, including a performance and recording by a real live orchestra for the winner. At the heart of the competition is the optional fundraiser, and this year they are raising donations for In Place of War. Brian Waters from the Q2 reached out to me to help spread awareness about the fundraiser, and that's how we came up with the idea for this video. Please visit theqtube.com for more information, and I hope you're able to participate. So before I start writing any music, I'll usually set up my markers. These are basically just little text reminders of important moments you want to hit, or even just want to be aware of. So go to Track Global Tracks, and make sure to Show Global Tracks. Also go to Tracks Global Tracks Configure Global Tracks, and make sure Movie is on. Here in the global track, you can click movie and create marker set from scene cuts. Logic will detect all the cuts in the video and automatically place markers at each of them. This seems super fast and handy, but I don't actually recommend you use it. As you can see, Logic made like 290 markers, most of which you don't need the music to hit, and most of which are not even actually on cuts. So this is really not helpful. I think it's worth the extra time to find hit points yourself and add your markers manually. Learn your key commands to make it faster. So I will watch the scene and pay attention for moments that I either want the music to hit precisely or are important enough for me at least to stay aware of. Go to View, Show List Editors, and make sure you have markers selected. Next, in the marker list, go to View and turn on Show Event Position and Length as Time. This will make it so our markers are based on the time code 
not the musical bars and beats. So for example, let's say I want the music to hit when the dog bursts through the door. I'll find the frame where that happens, add a marker with either the key command or beer in the marker list, double click the marker and rename it dog enters. Also right click or control click on the marker and click lock simpty position. Simpty position just means time code. If you don't lock the simpty position and you change your tempo or anything, the marker will no longer be in the right spot so make sure to lock it. Sometimes you'll have spotting notes with details about important moments to hit in the music. These spotting notes we're given are helpful for showing us the main story beats, but they don't cover everything, so I'll still go through and make my own calls about what else to include. So go through the whole video, setting up markers like this, and then when you're ready, we'll move on to tempo and meter, which are how we make the music actually line up to the picture. Also, I'll mention real quick, since we're talking about the score relief competition, that our January 2024 composing competition is about to start. Check out the Ryan Leach Composing Competition's YouTube channel for the announcement on December 29th. It's gonna be a good one. Now let's talk about tempo and meter. I'm gonna start the music on the appearance of the title, which is at one hour, three seconds, 15 frames. So I'll go to my tempo list and for bar one, beat one, I'll set the simpty position to that time code. You can double click on it and use a period to separate hours, minutes, seconds, and frames. Bonus tip, it can actually feel better if the music hits just a little bit after the cut, somewhere around two to four frames. Never have the music be a few frames early. It will feel weird, but coming the tiniest bit late can actually feel like it's right on time. So I'll set our start time to one hour, three seconds, 17 frames. Now I need to decide on my opening tempo, which I'm gonna come up with by letting the picture run, just imagining the general feel of the music I want to go there. I want the opening to be happy and uplifting, so it'll be on the slightly faster side, but not too fast. Too fast might feel frantic or overly exciting, and here we're just trying to establish a happy feeling. So I think somewhere around here feels pretty good. I'll turn on the metronome and adjust the tempo until it feels right. Around 110 BPM feels pretty good at a 4-4 meter. Let's say I wanna just cruise along at this feel and not hit anything until the dog bursts in. And when that happens, I want it to land right on a downbeat. So the door bursts open at one hour, 23 seconds, 14 frames. But my downbeat is six frames before that. So what I'll do is tweak my opening tempo. 110 was about what I wanted, but it doesn't have to literally be that number. So one way to do this is to click and drag the tempo around and see how the marker lines up with the downbeat of bar 10. 108.6 gets us exactly there, so I'll go to 108, which has our downbeat hitting just a few frames after the door bursts open. 108 BPM and 110 BPM are so close, no one is going to really feel the difference. And musically, this is how it will feel on bar 10 beat one. There, we landed on the downbeat right as the door slams open. I'll create a new tempo at that exact spot, bar 10, beat one, as a way to lock in the tempo from bars one through nine. So any changes will be after this point. If I need to tweak the tempo of the next section, my first part will remain untouched. Let's say I wanna keep that same general feel now. The next thing I wanna hit is this surprise expression from the cat. Find the frame, put a marker there if you don't already have one. Now I'll adjust my tempo from bar 10. But here we run into a bit of a problem. If I adjust my tempo to make the hit land right on the downbeat of bar 14, I have to slow it down to around 99 BPM. 110 to 108 wasn't really perceptible, but 108 to 99 clearly stands out. It's too drastic. So there are two solutions. The first is to use a change of meter. We can find a closer beat than beat one. For example, here we can see our marker is closest to bar 14 beat two. So if I make bar 13 a bar of five four, now our marker is getting closer to beat one and I can do our tempo tweak again. Adjust it to 105 and we're back in action. Or I could make bar 13 a bar of six four and the tempo from bar 10 changes to 111. Either one is pretty close, not much of a noticeable change. I'll go with the bar of 6.4 and 111 for two reasons. One, I'd rather be drifting slightly faster than slightly slower, just to keep the energy up. And two, it's a lot easier to write something naturally with two extra beats than with just one extra beat. 6.4 will feel a lot more seamless than 5.4. But there is an option other than changing meter. 
Let's go back to our original tempo of 108 and take another look at that marker. Right now, it's pretty close to the and of two, meaning the eighth note after beat two. There's no rule in film scoring that says a hit has to happen on a downbeat. All we really want is for the music and picture to line up and for the events to feel like they happen at the same time. So as long as there is a significant moment in the music at the right moment, it will feel right. So in this example, I could have a melodic element start on the and of two. That wasn't a downbeat, but it still made the hit. Of the two methods, I generally prefer the second, using a musical idea to make the hit rather than trying to shoehorn in some odd meter change. I would use the odd meter if hitting the downbeat really was worth it. For example, I wanna start a brand new texture or theme, beat one, lined up perfectly with a change in the picture. But if it doesn't have to be a downbeat, it doesn't have to be a downbeat. Also, I wanna mention that there are tools like Tempo Operations, which will calculate the tempo from one point to another for you. Personally, I just prefer to do it manually. Try both ways out, see which works better for you. All right, just a few final tips before I send you on your way. The first is to use a template. It's beyond this video to get into how to set up a template and what to include. You can find a million of those on YouTube already. I'll just add my support for the idea that you never want setting up tech to slow down your writing process. It's a huge time saver to have a template ready to go with all your instruments you regularly use, just a click away, routed to the right buses and reverbs so you don't get slowed down. One of the things I have set up in my template is that all instruments go to a music bus before the final master output. That way I have complete separation between the music and any dialogue or sound effects from the video. I can apply mastering like EQ or compression to the music and not also be accidentally compressing the sound effects. I can also mix the music against the sound with automation so that I'm presenting the music in the best possible way. When a director says the music is too busy or distracting, four out of five times, it's probably just too loud. Don't let hours of hard work go to waste just because you didn't mix the volume of the music properly. And it was just a few dB too many. Also, one last tip, I generally use markers for things I wanna hit or things that are happening visually, like cuts but I use a completely separate blank track as a visual guide for the cue's structure. I like to use regions with different colors on their own track at the top and name them with the general overall goal for that moment in the music. This might be happy or build tension or whatever, but it helps keep me focused as I work section to section. It's also just a productivity hack because sometimes writing the whole thing can seem a bit daunting, but I'll just try to get the happy section done before lunch can feel pretty manageable. It's a necessary approach for any of the other ADHD composers among you. I don't really do tech videos a lot. People just don't respond to them as much as harmony or orchestration videos. But if you want more stuff like this, please let me know in the comments. And please go to theqtube.com to learn more about score relief. And if you do enter the competition, I wish you the best of luck. If you're hungry for more music tech videos, I've got this one served up and ready to go. As always, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.